Ladies and gentlemen, if you give us just a moment, our recorder, we think, has a dead battery, so we're going to see about getting the battery in right quick. Ladies and gentlemen, let me call this meeting to order. This is the November meeting for the Valley of Mass County Zoning Board of Appeals. If you have not signed in, would you please sign in at the back so we can have a record of your attendance. Excuse <coughs> me. For those of you that may have never been here, let me explain how it operates so you can keep up with us. I will call each case by case name and case number. Staff will come to the lectern, will give us the request. Once they have presented the request, there will be possible discussions, questions among board members, the staff, or among ourselves. Once we are satisfied we understand that part of the, of the uh, presentation, I will ask if there are any persons here in support. If the applicant is here and would like to add something, please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record. Give us the information you would like for us to take under advisement. If there are multiple people here in support, we would like to know that you are here. But we do ask that if what you want to bring to us has already been brought to us, please don't come up to the lectern and give it to us two or three times in the interest of time. Once we have heard from <coughs> one side, and I will ask if there are any persons here in opposition, or if there are any persons here that have questions about what is being requested, Again, there may be discussions and or questions back and forth. Once we feel like we have heard from both sides, then we will attempt to render a decision here today. Again, we do ask that you give us all the information that you want us to take under advisement the first time around so we don't have a rebuttal and a re-rebuttal back and forth. Normally, uh, decisions are reached today at the meeting. However, it is in our bylaws that if we feel like information is lacking or parties need to discuss situation, we can postpone making a decision on the case until the next regularly scheduled meeting. After saying that, the first case we'll call is Lowndes County case VAR 2013-14, Kingsington Clark Jr., 2714 Scott Street, Val Ms. Carmella, you have the floor. Good afternoon, members of the board. Our first request um, today is by Mr. Kingston Clark. As you will recall, this case was tabled from your last meeting in order that staff re advertise for an additional variance. So the property is located at 2714 Scott Street in the residential zoning district. And this case centers around mainly two, well, five variances, but they all have to do with setbacks and maximum square footage. Um, our first variance is to the side yard setback. If you look at the site plan on the northern end of the, the site plan, you would see an overlap. Um, the applicant has constructed a, um, something like a link to to the house and it overlaps into the neighbor's property. Um, staff is recommending denial on that variance because we just cannot approve someone overlapping or encroaching on someone else's property. If he were to take that overlap down, then the house would sit about six feet from the property line and that was our recommendation for him to demolish that um, overhang and just request a variance to the overlap. So a four foot variance is being requested. Um, the staff has recommended approval for that particular variance. The second variance will be to the maximum overall square footage required for accessory building. With this particular lot size being half of an acre, the allotment is 800 square feet. And the 
applicant has a total, if you look at the pool house that's located on the northwest corner, as well as the shelter that's located at the south east corner, I'm sorry, of the property, it all totals over a thousand square feet. The pool house, pool house alone is a total of 816 square feet. Um, so the applicant is requesting a variance to the maximum square footage. In that case, staff has recommended um, denial. However, if the applicant is willing to demolish the shelter that's located at the um, southernmost, southern, southeastern corner, then staff can, you know, recommend approval to allow that two house to stay. <coughs> the third variance is to the side and rear yard um, for that existing pool house. The closest Point. <clears throat> at one point, the house sits, the, the pool house sits about five feet from that side property line. In the other corner, it sits about three feet from that property line. Um, staff get just really concerned anytime we go closer than five feet um, from a property line because of building code, fire code issues. Um, we did talk with the applicant to see if he was willing to just demolish a portion of it. And the way the structure is, is it's built, he says it's almost impossible. You just, just about have to take a whole thing now because of the roof structure and such. With regards to the setback to the shelter at the bottom um, right hand corner, at one point the shelter sits right on the property line, and on the other corner it sits about three feet from the property line. Staff is recommending denial um, with regards to that. Okay. Uh, for the record, in case, and I'm sure, I guess you're the applicant. Okay. In case nobody has been there in the last couple of days, I went by there yesterday. The lean-to on the north side has been taken down. It is no longer there. So at that point, we're not dealing with that variance. We would still need to deal with the variance for the setback for the house itself, which would be four feet. Right. The building in the right hand or the southeast corner has been totally demolished, so we don't have to deal with that. So it's gone. And from what I didn't go all the way back there to look, but it appeared that the pool and everything else was gone as well. I was there so at this point, anything pertaining to that, I guess, is moot, Carmelo? Yes. So we are now dealing with the size of the larger building being, paperwork says 12 square feet more. You said 16 in your presentation. So 16 foot variance to the square foot that we were considering and the setback rear and side mm -hmm. yard on that building. That's correct. Do you still count open area as part of the square footage? No, just wall. wall okay, area. they have taken a section of that out as of today. And I so did, it's an open porch. I did request him if he was doing any changes or amending his request to let us know and we don't <coughs> see anything okay. happening. So well, I saw the open corner. But I thought it was still a wall on the back side. Okay, it's something on two sides. Based on what we just discussed, so we're down to identify the numbers of the variants that we're looking at. Variants, variants what? Number, number, one, number one. Mm -hmm. And then the maximum square foot is questionable because there's nothing that we have to tell us if he's over or not. Okay. If he's indeed tore down some of those portions, he may very well be in, in compliance with the square footage. Um, we just need to look at setbacks. Okay. I know the applicant has to speak, but right now we're just considering one and two. Okay, so maybe three. Uh, I have a question about um, the fire code. Um, 
when buildings are a certain amount of closeness together, they have to have a certain, Scott and Sarah, you know the answer to this, um, they have to have a certain construction type so that they don't, if one catches on fire, then one next door doesn't catch on fire. It's foul. Right. Mm -hmm. So is this building is it's not, going it's not that it's close. close, it's close to the fence. Mm -hmm. um, well, parking lot. There, not, not only is the building but, oh my, I guess my question is, how far apart do buildings have to be before they have to have a firewall? Normally they are adjacent. No, it's it something. depends on the construction type. It depends on a number of things. Um, but a good rule is 20 feet. That's a good <coughs> rule to go by. Okay. But if both buildings are, are brick, then it's a possibility to meet 10 feet. Any other questions or discussion? Anything else for Carmelo before I ask any comments on the policy side? Thank you, Carmelo. Does anyone here would like to give us info, any additional information on this case? Yes. Yeah. Please, please come to the lectern. Give us your name and address <coughs> for the record, please. Okay, my name is Howard Johnson, and I'm, I'm with J.A. Property Management. I'm managing the property for Mr. Kingston Park. And the, uh, the portion of the game room house, uh, he has taken down a portion of the house. Yes. When the application was initially put in and it was showing 812 or 816 square feet, that was including this part that apparently is taking the exterior walls off? Yes, sir. We plopped the whole thing because it was all enclosed. Right. Okay. So at this point, with that taken off, theoretically he is well below 800. So I guess just to visit eight, some Security measure, we still talk about the variance. Because he's, he's, he's taken, look like eight or nine, and ten feet wide by about 20 feet long. Can the official withdraw that request? Yes, he can. On the record? Yes. It looks like either that side alone would be, you know, uh, more than. Yeah. It, it, it'll be well with you. And I can't. This is still a wall right here. Yes, that's a wall. Yes, okay. So we even even if that wasn't a wall, we're still talking about a setback variance, rear yard and side wall. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Does anybody else need to see this? Yeah, that's, that's where, where the building in the corner has been demolished. This is where the pool used to be. Yeah, that's behind the building right there. And that's the front of the building. So that's where the lean to is to come back. You want to see it? I see it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any questions at this point from anybody? I get your, well, we got your name and address for the right Is anyone else here in support of this application would like to give us any additional data? Is there anyone here in opposition to this request, or is there anyone here that has questions about what is being requested? I still got it. Okay, come to the lectern. Give me your name and address for the record, please. Martin Collins, 2718, I'm right next door. Okay. Uh, Everything's going down, I'm good. Everything has been done. I want to make sure we're in the fire code. Yeah, my property line, as you said. I only that. Uh, and you were on the north side? Yeah, uh, right here on the side where Lincoln was taken out. We're three feet in. Everything's right at my property line. Yeah. I'm good with everything that has been done. I just want to make sure that I'm not going to have to come to the area. No. You know what I'm saying? That's where you, you, you do not have to ask me any variance. Your house, 
sit far enough away that it meets all the setback variances and setback, I mean all setback requirements. And the setback requirement is to make sure that you are safe on your side. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions or discussions? Any? Yes. Yeah. My name's uh, Tony Miller. I live at 2611 Thomas Street, and I would live in the uh, lot that's in the far corner of where the shed is located, at the south end. Uh, my question is just, uh, what does zoning have to say about in case, which uh, again, I'm I'm uh, happy with everything that's been done, and uh, the gentleman that owns the property, he's, uh, you know, he's he's done what uh, you know has been asked of him, so you know that's all good and, and everything. But the only question I have is is uh, to make sure that there's no way that can be sublet at the building out there that they tore down, the one that we're talking about, that that can't be like rented out, a house be rented out, and then that other building be rented out. In other words, having not, two different not leaving. So that is against zoning code and everything else. All right, so I just want to make sure I knew that just in case. I, you know, I'm not saying that he would do that, but you don't know future renters, future buyers of the property. You know, so I just wanted to make sure of that. Now, that's one residence per lot. Okay. And if they tried to rent it out, it would become a second residence, yeah. which would be in violation of code. Well, you know, with the DSU and, you know, a lot of these college kids, they can, you know, they can live in a little bitty uh, place. I was just curious about that. Thank you. All right. Anyone else like to address the board about this particular case? Was there any response to your office from out of the week you be aware of? Yes, sir. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, any other questions, discussions from the board at this time? I, I have another question for Carmel. How did that house slash garage which we're going to give a variance to on that lot line. How did they get a permit to build that on the, over, over the, how'd they get that? How'd that thing get there? Well, that's the issue. There was no permit when they constructed that. So the garage was constructed after the house was built? Yes. Okay, nobody got a permit to build that garage. Mm -hmm. And when was that done? I'm not sure. Um, as in the staff report, this was all, came up as a, a, a complaint right. and when code enforcement went out, that's when all these things were revealed. There was a lot of construction on this property without a building permit. And if I may, with regards to the real setback for that pool house, for that, uh, we can give an administrative waiver of two feet. Um, so the eight feet you see there, we can do that as staff administratively without a variance. That's eight feet. The, the code allows staff to give up to a 20% relief to any setback. So okay. setback is 10 that feet. That doesn't take both sides. No, no, just only the rear. Right. The rear yard. Okay. So at this point, we are looking at a four foot variance north side of the house to the property line. We are looking at a what do we decide? Seven foot variance on the north side of the accessory building. Everything else has been taken care of either by removal or can be handled by administrative variance on the rear yard. So that's the only two items we are actually looking at. Because with them opening up the side of the building and making it a porch, they're now no longer over in square footage or accessory building. That's correct. Okay. Did I model that enough for everybody to lose track of? Any other questions, discussions? Can I get a motion on this request? Anybody? Dealing with one 